this worked? If this has worked, hi, I think it's working. Hard to know, so I'm just gonna do some checks. Still got about eight minutes until the stream. Um, so if you're here, hi, say hello in the chat. Um, oh cool, it's actually on. Cool. Hi. Um, we've got some time, so if you're not ready. Um, oh hi, good to see you. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got a little bit of time, we've got about six minutes. No, a little bit longer, eight minutes until we start. Um, so if you want to grab yourselves drinks, whatever you need, um, then please do. I'm just going to do some social media shares. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm looking for, are you drawing with me tonight? I hope you are. If not, don't worry. I'm just glad you're here. I'm going to try and make sure I do these a lot more regularly. Um, just finding the time has been so difficult. Um, so yeah. It's nice to be here and uh, actually do it. Just putting the links out, letting people know I'm here. I am a very busy lady, that is very, very true. Um, but you know what, I want to do more with my classes and things like that. So um, it's nice to sit down and do something like this with you guys now and again. I don't make a lot of time for the live streams. So um, now I've kind of like found a day that kind of suits my family, which is going to be a Friday evening. Um, and yeah. <laughs> And hopefully this will be a weekly thing. There'll be a couple of weeks where I may not be able to do it, but I'm hoping to be able to crack on with another event next week. Um, yeah, I'm just, whilst um, we'll wait for people to join, I actually can't see how many people are in at the minute. So I'm just gonna, just move around on my socials and just post about it. Oh my word. I'm going to tweet out the stream so hopefully people will come watch. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Hopefully some of my students will pop by. I know there's definitely one coming tonight, two possibly. So yeah, um, we'll see who rocks up. So we've got about five or six minutes or so until we start. Grab yourselves drinks. I am a little bit early. I did set this up a little bit early because uh, my daughter finally fell asleep, so um, it was up to optimum time to turn it on. Oh, someone just donated to my fundraiser. That's super cute. Um, do let me know that the volume's all okay, uh, the light's all okay. Oh my word, I'm having this major issue with um, stream in person. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you for tweeting, appreciate that. Go away, oh my word. So I'm having, um, the first time this has happened actually, um, somebody, like a fake streaming link keeps going out. 
Um, and they're spamming my page, so they obviously know that I'm going live tonight. Um, but yeah, they've kind of taken a, my link and they made a fake link. I need to make sure that I make people aware of this because it's not good. It's early here. Where are you? Where are you in the world? It's really exciting. So I'm really looking forward to drawing this wolf eye, it's going to be really quite fun. Um, we'll see, I'm going to, sound is great, thank you so much, uh, I'm going to see um, how many rock up, I'm sure at least three of my students will come in. East Coast of the US, amazing, that's amazing. Though haven't you guys had some very extreme weather recently? Or is that the west coast? Might be west coast. No. No, it is the east coast. Just gonna load up YouTube, see what it's looking like. Six notifications. Oh, okay. For watching. Hi, guys. Hopefully. Hey, Evie, how are you going? It's good to see you here. Is your sister drawing this evening? Oh, uh, no, Monica can't get the chat to work. Well, that's rubbish. Are you registered, Monica? It could be because you maybe don't have a YouTube account. Um, I'm starting to see the numbers creep up now. I just had a quick newsy. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes before we start. There will always be a little delay. I have came, I came on quite early actually. <laughs> that's mental <laughs> that's crazy weather oh my gosh yeah I couldn't be doing with the yo-yoing we're quite lucky at the minute it's just been quite it's been all right actually it's been a little bit mild for us for this time of year gonna do it tomorrow that's fair I am recording it but I've got a feeling that YouTube just keeps it on there anyway but I've got it on record just in case because obviously I don't want people to miss out this is gonna be quite a few people that may miss out um, but they don't need to because it's all gonna be available um, but yeah I'll give it a few more minutes and then we'll just get started um, I'll go over the materials obviously if you don't have the exact materials to me don't worry um, as long as you've got similar uh, or you can work with what you've got it's great um, but I do recommend 2H, 2B, 4B pencil I do have my 6B I don't use it very often um, I have my blending stump just number one because it's quite a small drawing um, I've got my mono eraser I've got my putty eraser and I've also got the elusive paintbrush that has rocked up today uh, Ali's on the live. Hey Ali, good to see you. Um, yeah, if you if you guys aren't registered, you can't chat on the chat, but that's no problem. Um, if you do need to message me, please do. Let me just make sure my iPad's connected so I can see uh, any Facebook messages coming through. I don't know why your message didn't come through on my iPad. Um, but it's fine. Uh, I'll keep my phone handy just in case you guys need me so yeah if you've got questions as we're drawing um do just ask um 
either via just Facebook Messenger if you need to, um, or via um, the chat system. Uh, paper I'm using tonight is a Bristol Board Smooth. Um, so if you've got quite a toothed paper, so paper that's got like a lot of lot of divots in it, a lot of um, dimples, then you may find the smoothness can take a little bit longer with graphite. Um, so just keep building your layers after. Um, sorry, I'm just getting messages through. Um, so yeah, so Bristol Board Smooth for me tonight. I always use this for graphite. It's my favorite type of paper. Um, and then I've got, I'll just show you, I've got the uh, Stedlitter Mars Lumograph pencils. These are one of my favorites. And then I've actually got a round tip mono. Might look at the square tip. Um, because some people use the square tips and I've never actually used them myself. Oh good, I'm glad, I'm glad you've got Bristol Board. Bristol Board's lovely. I am a big fan. Okay, I think, looking at, so I've got five people on here, which is amazing. Good to see you all. Um, I'll give it until just after five past seven, then we'll get started. Um, and we'll go from there. So if you need to get yourselves a drink, or some chocolate please do uh, we'll draw till about nine o'clock so two hours um, if you need to go do um, this is recorded so I will make sure it's uploaded after yes yeah, somebody who Monica has the square mono I noticed on her photo on the uh, group chat on my um, patreon group um, yeah it looks quite interesting I'm wondering if it'll be really good to get like, like in particular we've got like a really thin line here so I wonder if it would be quite good to get that edge or whether it might just be quite annoying to continuously get those sharp edges. I can imagine it can be quite tricky. Um, the techniques that we're going to use tonight I use throughout all of my classes. I'm hoping that we can finish this whole eye tonight. If anything, if I can just get the eye done, I'll be made up. If we can get a bit of the hair done underneath and above, then great. Yeah, the pencils is, is a personal thing. Um, I know some of my students use mechanical pencils. Um, it's just what matters is that you have a 2H, 2B and a 4B. Um, they're the ones that I'll rotate between. Sometimes I use a 6B, just depends. Um, some of the paper press of the new Bristol board has changed, so layers can be a little bit difficult to achieve. Um, so I find that if I um, have the 6B, I can just add that little bit more depth okay my numbers haven't changed so a couple more minutes and then we'll get going it's half term this week i think isn't it evie pretty sure it's half term it's very tricky because my daughter doesn't go by the term time, so she'll still be in nursery next week. Okay, I think what we'll do, um, I'll just have one more check. Yeah, I thought so, Ali, thank you. Oh good, that message came through on my iPad then, so that's handy. Right. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. I've given people a chance. If they're going to join, they can join in after. So, uh, anybody that's used to drawing with me will know the pencil I'll probably go for um, first when it comes to an eye, which will be the very sharp 2B. And what we're going to do is we're going to go for our outer line first, and we're just going to create that depth. I'm just going to check I've got the mapping right on this. So I'm going to start off in the corner of the eye first and basically the reason I do it with the 2B over this H pencil that's down is I want to ensure that I don't lose this um, definition of the eye, like I don't want to lose it when we start shading. I'm going to have to move quite into a difficult position here, just get round the top here. And the beauty of using graphite is that you can actually um, not worry about your reference lines so much. You can actually leave them in. Whereas if you're drawing in colour, which obviously I do a lot, 
you have to remove them. So it's quite ideal. Got a little bit of a round edge there. Then we come down on the top, bottom eyelid there. This has a bit of a point in that corner, which I haven't really grasped. Right, I'm going to have to keep moving my chair to get into the right position. <laughs> okay, lovely. So we've got our edge down, and we're going to go straight in with. Actually, I'm going to stay with the 2B, and again, I'm going to map the actual edge of the eyeball itself. And I'm rotating the pencil around so you'll see me twist the pencil and that's just me rotating it because this dark line is actually going to be quite important kind of goes like an oblong shape here but it is still round try and keep your lines as crisp as possible Just where there's a slight haze just over this area here, kind of throw in the um, quality a little bit there. But just where the eye is slightly looking over in this direction, it's kind of lost that roundness over on this side. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to map the pupil don't want to lose the pupil as we're drawing. I mean, it's got some weird like things going on there. We've got another very dark area that I'm going to map. A little like mountain. If you've just joined, all we've done so far is just mapped the darker points of the eye so far so you haven't missed anything and we're going to go for so this there's this line here we need to make sure it's nice and thin next to the actual eyeball there again it's another dark area oh gosh what have I done here uh, I've got another line there that's gonna kind of curve off a dark line okay that's fine so we've got a really dark patch there okay if you're all good I'm gonna switch into the 2H now so um, we always use a 2H pencil um, to create the base of our eye we're gonna get that sh natural shine because the 2H is gonna allow the 2B and the 4B to grip it's going to look really pretty and what we'll do is we'll just start off in this corner of the eye here now where it's an area that we're not really that sure of like hair direction or anything like that if you go for a circling very tiny circling motion that will um, keep a nice natural realism what te technique did you use for your original sketch? Uh, grid method tracing. So I trace um, all my outlines. Um, for my students, I actually have a drawing tablet. So I'll load up the animal into my Photoshop and I will make sure that I'm getting the correct outline for them so they have like a proper... Um, sketch of that actual uh, line art and then yeah I then trace it with my projector now, there's a very tiny area this but I'm just gonna smooth that in there's never any shame with tracing I'm gonna go for the 2B now guys and just making sure that we've got our edge can you see that there's a really dark zone here just next to 
that little patch also this is also a little bit darker than what I've made it so let's deepen it down yeah tracing is a tool and it should if you want to use it great if you don't want to use it fine whatever you want to do yeah it saves time it actually teaches you go for your blending stump teaches you proportions as well um, when I first started learning to draw it really allowed me to have that time to learn where certain placements are so uh, any of my students will know I always make mistakes I'm always like oh my line art's all incorrect because I never used to use their line art I used to make my own um, but because of my knowledge it never really mattered I just figured out where I needed to put the pencil um, so yeah Back to the 2H for the next little area. Again, I'm just going to go for the circle in motion. It's actually a light area, so don't fill it too much. Kind of want to keep. It's actually quite a white area there. If I just make a little, like. There's like a little line going across almost like a little ball and then just next to it again with the 2B so I'm just going to go for the um, mono I'm actually just going to just dab a little bit of that out not a lot, just a tiny smidge. And just give that a little smooth off. Yeah, it's not worth spending like three or four days on a project <laughs> like that. Uh, go for your 2H for the next little line. Luckily, there's not a lot of information here. We don't need to worry about this too much. You literally just fill that in and go for your 2B straight after. I don't think I've done a free hand drawing in a very long time. Be intriguing to see how long it would actually take me. I think by now it's almost like a little form of laziness on my part. But then if I'm doing a commission it's more cost effective for me to trace and ensure that the clients get perfection as opposed to I'm just gonna go for my mo my monitor and just wanna round that off. I just took that roundness off then. Okay, back to the 2H and we're going to fill in this dark bit, so we're going to create the base first. Again, go through the circling. If I'm going too fast guys, please just say. Um, but I imagine this is no different to my normal class, it's just you can't pause me. <laughs> we can, if you tell me. Once that's filled in, give that a very good smooth. And you might just lose a little bit of your work from that previous little area in the eye. So just try not to get rid of that line too much. And then switch into your 2B and do the same. Go for your circling, go for your natural realism. Oh, thank you. It's really nice comments. I really appreciate it. Now, the last live we did was a bunny. And do you know, it's actually been a year. And I'm definitely not leaving it a year again. This will be, hopefully, every week to every couple of weeks. until around about October time where it will back burner just for Christmas but 
to see how I am if I'm able to just solely work on tutorials rather than commissions then tutorials it is okay so when you come to smooth this 2B in it's not going to really like it it's going to pull a lot of the graphite up so we'll switch into the 4B now you can see I've kind of hazed off into that bit next to the eye so I'm actually just gonna clean that up a bit yeah it'd be nice to do more live streams we don't want is lines like your edges of these to look unrealistic and that is by you being able to see the outline of your pencil it wants to all blend and merge into one so that's what we're aiming for here nice okay going to go for the 2H again just to fill in I'm not going to go right to the top you can just see just at the top here that it's a little bit lighter so I'm going to leave just a tiny touch just there I'm going to come down and I'm going to switch into the 2B I'm just going to just about not even midway through just like in line with this little edge here I'm just going to allow the 2B just to cut in a bit there yeah values definitely are very important and I'm going to start down here with the 2H don't worry if you've used your 2B just switch to your 2H I'm going for this circle motion by filling that in I'm going to give that smooth just with my blending stump there and go for the 2B just in this bottom area just nice and just glaze it over now eyes are my favourite subject and whenever we start a new animal I always hope to start with the eye first but it doesn't always happen <laughs> because we tend to start on an ear or a different point of our drawing when you're doing a commission um, I do recommend you start with the eye let the client see your work from the eye you'll know if you're capturing the animal correctly if you get the eye which is very important go for your 2H, we're going to start in the eye now uh, just looking at this, what is this? I think this is majorly important. So I'm going to go for circling straight away. Come around the edge. Coming up to this funky, wavy marking. So yeah, if I'm doing a commission, I'll always start with eyes. I'd rather spend all the time in the world creating the eye, and if it's wrong, refunding my client and saying, no, sorry, I can't draw for you. Um, so somewhere I always begin. With our art classes, I'm quite confident, quite comfortable.
Oh, we'll do, we'll do almost like a section by a section maybe, or, oh sure. Gonna give that a smooth, gonna really press in now with the blending stump, like really. Give that 2B just something to sit on. Go back to your 2H, actually go back for your 2B. And I just want you to just mark this mark. Because this is important. Just make sure that if you're going to use your 2H, you can still see that. Now once you've done that, go back to your 2H and let's continue down this area here it's a very dark patch and the circling it in a space like this with an eye is just perfect the blending stumps make all the difference yeah they do <laughs> I couldn't live without my blending stump. I know one artist, his work is amazing, I'm not going to name names, um, but I absolutely love his work and he actually uses his fingers and it, it blows my mind. Again, give that a really tough smooth down but make sure you don't lose the little mountain shape or that little wavy line. And once you've got that, go for your... I'm tempted to fill this whole thing in. Yeah, I think it's the right choice. Is it the right choice? No. Go for your 2B. Let's get the edge nice and dark. Nice. I know, I don't know how they do it using his fingers it's crazy I say his work is just speaks for itself but I'm like how, how are you doing this <laughs> every time so you want that dark edge and then we're going to graduate our edge out. I'm going to lose this line. Let me just pop this back in. So whenever you've got a deep line, the mistake a lot of people make is that they leave that deep line out to dry on its own. You need to graduate that shadow on this side and also that side. It can't just be a single deep line. There's always a touch of a gradual graduation with the tonal value. And also remember, when you're creating another deep line, whatever your darkest point is currently, you need to match it. So my darkest point here is unbalanced because this doesn't match it at the moment, but it will. exactly exactly that you're so right like it's not archival once you start putting oil on the page but as i say the work speaks for itself no one complains i just remember when he told me and i was like no i can't do that <laughs> as we come down this area of the eye it's going to get dark and then this patch this mountain Now you might be looking at this and you might be thinking, oh my word, that is horrendous. It's not looking like the reference photo at all. Oh, I'm going to have to start again. I'm going to have to rejoin. There's always an ugly zone. It's the same with colour pencil. And you have to get past the mindset and just carry on. Because... There's no point starting again at this stage, just keep going. 
and also once you're past the ugly zone things start to make sense obviously they won't for a little while like to me if I'm going to be really honest with you my head's going ooh my word this is not right because it looks so weird very rare will you ever draw an eye this big that's another thing to consider here as I'm coming up to that line I just want to put that back in I've been drawing three years now and I've never been asked to just draw an eye so yeah you would never really draw it this big to start off with Okay, I'm going to give that a smooth and I'm really going to press in. And if you smooth in like a circular motion, oh, just looks so, so good. I almost feel like I should have gone for a tiger eye actually, they're way more fierce next time I'm going to go for my 4B just for my edge now I want a thin dark line so make sure you rotate that pencil around make sure it's sharp and just have a thin line Yeah, exactly. It, it took me a long time to get past the ugly stage as well. Um, and understanding that you've just got to continue to trust the process. If you're confident in what you do, there's no reason for it to not look how you want it to look. It's just going to take time to build those layers. I'm just going to do a bit of graduation up here and now what I'm going to do I'm going to leave this zone for a while we're going to go back to the 2H and again circle round I'm pulling my circles round in this motion as we're coming down this part of the eye and then as we're coming up here I'm going to do them in a anti-clockwise and we can see all this detail not worried I'm not going to copy it. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. I've been teaching now for, oh, uh, fifth. 15 months? Are we on 15 animals now? I think we are. Um, and yeah, as far as I know, my students love it. They seem to stick around, <laughs> which is nice. Evie has improved like you wouldn't believe. In fact, everybody has. Monica's doing well. Ali's doing great. Like, yeah, it's been amazing it's an it's really refreshing to know that my classes are doing as well as they are yeah I'm not I'm not fond of uh, people ask me for color lessons all the time and it's hard to I'm just gonna draw this line in here explain why I, I don't really give color lessons and that's because of the cost to start off with um, I want my classes to appeal to everyone. We're about to go into a major cost of living crisis and if I start just honing in on colour lessons and starting to ignore the graphite, I'm excluding so many people from opportunities to learn to draw because obviously colour is going to be a favourite medium. 
but my pencils alone, like as it seems like you understand, like the cost of the pencils, the um, cost of the paper, is such so, such a significant difference between graphite and color. Um, so I'm always quite reluctant to teach anything other than graphite. Plus, graphite is beautiful. Like it, you can get such beauty from a graphite drawing. Like I absolutely love it. Okay, that finished colouring. Colouring. <laughs> now I've done all that. I then I'm just going to smooth this in. Not worrying about that line art there. It's not an issue. Gonna need a new blending stump at some point. Well, yeah, I, I taught myself colour pencil from learning graphite, so opportunities are endless. I'll give this a really good smoothing, guys. Like, really press in that 2H, like, so you can't see any of the pencil marks that you've just made. If you're using like a toothed paper, Getting this smoothness that you can see from me is uh, tricky. It's looking good. Uh, go for your 2B. And again, we're going to come from the edge of the eye itself into the drawing, into the eye. Colour is beautiful. Colour, I always say, is a lot more natural, a lot more realistic to the animal if that's what they want. And graphite is more artistic and more beautiful to look at. That's what I tend to say to my clients. Yeah, yeah. I've never been fond of tooth papers with graphite. I find it challenging and a little bit demoralising. So this is why I go for Bristol board and I try and ensure that all my students get Bristol board because it's so much nicer. It's forgiving, it gives you that beautiful look. So we're just going to come round the edge of the eye first because if we're looking into the eye here there isn't a lot of tonal value there that we need to think about we've got such a significant depth at the bottom of the eye here I'm having to keep an eye out on my Facebook page. I have a spammer, a random spammer. And I don't know <laughs> what they're doing, but they're really winding my, me up tonight. I've had them on my page like five times now. I must have blocked about, I don't know, four accounts, four or five accounts. I don't think the back, I'm just having a quick check. No. I've never had it before. I've never had someone, you know, like when badminton or Royal, Royal International or anything like that, or uh, Horse of the Year is streaming on TV and you're always looking for a link. And if you go on Facebook, there's always those people with like dodgy links. It's one of them. And it's my link to my live stream. It's so bizarre. <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna achieve. We're going to just kind of come in up a little bit here, up towards this lovely shape. 
Okay, I'm going to give that a smooth in. Just really pushing that blending stump down. You'll start to see that really beautiful. Uh, no, I'm not going to go to badminton um, this year. To be perfectly honest, like, I've learned a lot last year um, from doing horse shows. Um, I did a lot of craft fairs and things like that. And I am going to do um, like a whole like tips on markets and things for, sh for you know, artists. Um, go for your 4B. Um, the problem I have with the big international horse shows is the um, costs. So, um, for example, to exhibit at um, Horse of the Year at Birmingham, is it Birmingham or the XL? It's probably the XL. Is it the XL? No, it's Birmingham. So, to exhibit at Horse of the Year, um, just for a small stand, so I think it was a 2B3, it was £2,500 for the week. Now, I have real big beef with this because um you know for a small business like myself yeah i could probably do a gofundme and see if any my followers would happily help cover the cost to go but i don't understand why it needs to be so expensive um and badminton i don't think is that far off two and a half grand uh royal windsor horse show um was two and a half grand um just for a three by six, but it was a three meter wide, uh, mm. six deep. And it's just ridiculous, Ali, like it really is. Um, and for what it is, there's no guarantees that you'll, um, you know, get any sales or anything. I did Royal International Horse Show last year. They actually want me to go back this year, which is really kind and I'm really excited. Um, but again, where I'd want to be for five days would be um, £2,820, I think it was when I checked. And I was just like, oh my word, impossible. So, yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, off topic, but proud of how far you've come with your nails. They're looking quite lovely. Oh, thank you so much. So you must follow me. <laughs> Do apologise, but I don't recognise your name. Um, but yeah, these are actually my nails, which is crazy. Um, and I have to keep cutting them down. So these are gel nails. So I still bite, but obviously I can't actually get to my nail. Um, yeah. It's doing really well. I need, I'm getting them done again next week. I think I might get glittered ones. Feel a bit of bling in my life. So we're just creating this, just the depth coming around the edge of the the eye. I was going to say ear then, and then graduating it out. So then you start you start to see it lifting up. So I'd love to do. Um, it was actually quite funny when I spoke to Horse of the Year, and <laughs> he sent me the costs. I literally replied and I was like, "Yeah, I can't afford that, Simon. Sorry." I was just blatantly honest. I said, like, I, I said, I'm actually quite shocked of how much that is. And his response was, oh, well, all the outdoor shows are a little bit more expensive, probably worth going to them. And I was just like, wow, okay. Well, he was wrong. They're not actually that um, much cheaper. But I'll see what happens with Royal International this year. Um, Cause they, as I said, they have invited me back um, I'm going to have a chat with them probably in the coming weeks. I imagine they'll give me a call, which is the plan. And if they offer me something good, then you'll see me there. But for what I want from them and where I'd want to be, not sure. Right, all the work I've just done, I'm going to smooth it in. Just in the area that we've just done it in, just give it a smooth. Oh, 
I feel really bad that I don't recognise your name. <laughs> but it's so lovely that you're here to support me, so thank you so much. Okay, let's go for the pupil. So go for your 2H, just for your base. Just fill it in. Give it a smooth. Oh, I'm going to have to clean it. If you've got a dirty blending stump, do give it a quick clean. Um, you don't want it to deposit too much graphite. I've just thrown mine on the floor. And then go for your 2B. And it's quite dark. You can probably, if you feel comfortable, go for a bit of medium pressure. Don't worry about um all the little fiddly detail bits there oh don't feel bad we'll start our friendship from today well make sure you drop into my messages i'd love to chat to you properly and if we have spoken i'm going to be really quite embarrassed Now, not um, what we're going to do is going to do a very gentle 2H layer because we might lose this pattern and I, can't, I don't want to. But what I want you to do is actually pull it from the eye, almost like we're going to be drawing fur. Because it's kind of got that kind of pattern to it. I haven't done an update on my nails in a while I guess because it's kind of just been um, part of my life now I go every two weeks to get them done give that a smooth and then switch into your 2B now if anyone's drawing along and has an animal they'd like to do for a live draw along say it now if anyone mentions the word eagle or bird, I'm kicking you off. <laughs> I'm not doing a bird. Not for a while. But I'm happy to take suggestions. Um, and we can start doing like a week by week of getting our bird done. We could do a hyena. I have a hyena in my folder. I have a caracal. Uh, any big cat. Got any of those. yeah marathon training it's crazy at the minute i'm tired i've done 12 miles this week so i'm really tired actually if you haven't already please sponsor me money goes to the most and i mean it by saying the most loveliest little horse sanctuary here in the uk called cecil's horse sanctuary in me as a business if you like I've been supporting them now for two years um a whip it oh oh that's a nice one I will bear that in mind um yeah so they came to me a couple of years back and asked if I could just donate like a print or something to like a raffle they were doing and I did one better and donated a whole drawing um, and then it's just kind of snowball from there like I absolutely love them and the lady that I'm going to go for the uh, blending stump here the lady that runs it Julie um, she actually works three jobs to pay for the ponies she is literally living and breathing her sanctuary and those ponies are never rehomed they have a home for life with her stay with your 2B just go over it again um, and she's literally working herself to the ground, I would say, to look after these ponies. And her volunteers are so, so lovely. Uh, the dealings I've had with them has just been a 
pleasure. So I've always supported them and I always will. Um, and unfortunately, just before Christmas, they had the council come in onto their land and they were only supposed to be there for a month. Um, and they ended up being there, I believe it was like three or four months and they completely trashed the land. So some of the ponies were having to live in like knee deep mud, like some of the mud holes that the council have left behind and damaged the fields. So some of these ponies are like living on an island because they can't find like new land for them and they're desperately trying. And it's just the whole scenario is so sad. And she's like, <laughs> honestly, this woman like almost breaks my heart when I speak to her. She's just such a beautiful person and you can see how much those ponies and this situation means to her. Ali, you should be drawing, not sending me pictures. <laughs> are you sending me pictures of a whippet? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, she's got a seal face. Oh. <laughs> it would look really weird. Or he or she would look really weird as a drawing, like, as, like, just her head and neck. Um, <laughs> it's so cute. Um... But yeah, so when I decided to go in for the marathon, originally I wasn't actually, I didn't enter in for a charity run, I entered in just for my own placing. Um, I'm, I'm drawing too. <laughs> um, and then when I got accepted, I was like, oh, actually I can now pick a charity. And of course I was gonna pick Cecil's Horse Sanctuary. Um, so my goal is to raise 3,000 pounds. Um, and I'm gonna go up there in a couple of weeks. I need to organize it actually, um, and go and see them and take some videos of the ponies and stuff. Like one of them's called Noodles and he's a blind pony and he's so cute. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go up and meet them and introduce you guys to them. Cause yeah, they're, I just want you to meet Julie. I wanna meet Julie. I haven't actually met them yet, but they're just such lovely people. So that's kind of a, a little pupil bit there. Like, I'm really happy with that. I don't really want to take too much on more than that. But just above it, you just see there's like a little dark patch. I've got my 2B in my hand here. And I'm just going to circle a little bit and just create this little depth here. And also create a bit more depth coming around, especially around here. So if you can, I actually, if everybody just donated a quid out of my followers, £10,000 would go to them. Got my 2B, I'm just going to create this little curve. And then we've got one more curve. Up and over and down. It's like this is kind of like meeting it. I'm going to give this a smooth just around this area and even into here. I'm not actually going to use a pencil. It's not required. But yeah, as you say, you don't mind helping people like that, that generally do need the help and support. And do you know what? They don't beg or anything. They just try and survive. And it's, ugh. I just worry about them through the financial crisis. I really do. Staying with my 2B, just bringing in some more definition here. Some of this is really dark. And then we'll use our, probably, we'll use our putty eraser. If you haven't got a putty eraser, go for, go for your rubber, if you've got a normal rubber, not your mono. And you're gonna use like a, a long flat edge of it. But hopefully you've all got putty rubbers. If not, it's a must have in your equipment, I swear. It's life changing. That's smooth, just in the patches. Now, you've got um, some eyelashes here coming in. 
I'm gonna sneeze. Just give me one minute. <laughs> oh my word. Is it, do you know it's the worst when you're gonna sneeze and then it goes? Oh, it's such a tease. Right, I'm gonna deepen this line and this one. Let's go for the putty eraser. And we're gonna make like a, I'll do it on camera. It's gonna be a little bit blurry because I'm gonna be, so I'm just gonna kind of manipulate a corner here. It's a little bit dirty, so I'm just gonna move that into like, like a little, little edge, as you can see. And then what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull it towards the center of the eye and each time I'm dabbing if you need to you can change that direction it doesn't actually matter the direction you pull it or push it just gonna create and then in some places just go over the little in patches and it'll just lighten those patches just that little bit more now you might be thinking a lot of people when they draw an eye they always think that they need to put a white dot somewhere what's important when you look at your reference photo is you're gonna look in I can't obviously point at it but you're gonna look in your reference photo and you're gonna find that bright white dot and it's never or well, it's not always in the pupil so I see it as this here and there's also a tiny like triangle upside down triangle about here that's really bright white so if you really want to add a bright white spot it's not always required you can truly add that in but there's just a little a little nub of bright white just on that edge there so I'm actually gonna just bring the tonal value down on the rest of it just a little bit just needs a little bit of graphite So now we've got the eye shape, like we've done quite well there for an hour, I think it looks really good. Um, you can if you want bring in these hair details if you want to, I'm going to do it myself, I'm just going to make sure you curve in them around the eyeball and try and make sure that they're similar tonal value to what you've drawn. It's not ne necessary really. If you want to, you can. Um, gel pens, um, especially if you enter into a competition, uh, you actually can't. Doesn't it take the archival um, away as well? I don't know why people use gel pens. Like You can literally, there's so many methods that you can take. Let me draw a spot here. I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to curve a line around there. I'm going to put some in there. Just little hints of detail. And then if you just go over with your blending stump and just smooth out the harshness. Looks great. Looks so good. Just going to do a little bit more. one thing that I always drill into my students and there's going to be people watching that are not part of my patron is um, to do a copyright so I'm on quite a lot of pencil groups and I'm actually quite shocked with the amount of people that are drawing people like I don't know Wednesday Adams is one because obviously it's quite a popular 
thing right now or any form of Disney Disney's always always on there you need to be so careful I'm not a killjoy at all <laughs> but it's very important to be so careful let's go for our 2H let's do this bit because if you've downloaded a photo from Google you can't draw that that is not your photo it doesn't belong to you you don't have permission from the photographer and just don't do it even if you make I don't know 20 changes it, it doesn't matter the reference photo didn't belong to you copyright law is very 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 weird and very strict and the likes of Disney do not care I'm gonna go for the 2B just for this edge I'm gonna sharpen up it's gonna be quite loud so do bear with um so if you go on to like unsplash and pixabay they are reference free photo sites but i have just discovered myself that they do reference the photographer so now anytime i do a pixabay image we reference the photographer I was quite shocked a few weeks back I have a drawing that I did from Pixabay and I saw the photographer on Facebook I saw the reference photo I used on Facebook and I was shocked um, and a little bit worried so I've taken it down um, so we have to be careful so it's always handy to keep a little bit of a um, Go back to your 2H. Records of where you reference photos of farm, links, things like that. Um, or speak to photographers. Have a chat with them. They're so such lovely people and they deserve the credit. I have five affiliated photographers for my art classes now. And each one gives us permission to use their photos. I have one photographer in particular that doesn't allow any other artist to draw his work. It's just me. And my students which is immense like it's it's such an honor um and because i'm very honest about what the work is for what we're going to do things like that the photographers are great so just be really really careful yeah exactly photographers will allow you to use them if you ask right i've gone for the 2b i'm just going to do this last part underneath I say last part we've still got we've got an hour so we can start building around the edge which is really good I hope you guys are keeping up okay and I'm not going too quick don't forget this is going to be this is recording right now so you can come back to it if you need to So just whatever you're doing, do not draw anything from Disney. They are more than happy to sue you. More than happy. They've gone after so many Etsy sellers in this last couple of weeks because they've got the money to do so. And unfortunately, you ain't got a leg to stand on because it doesn't. the stuff doesn't belong to you. Um, so you, yeah, you just need to be so careful. It's not worth it. And if you're going to draw something like that, don't post it on social media. Even if you're not selling it, it doesn't matter. You've broken copyright law, so just don't just don't so I'm just making sure that this little area under this eyelid is nice and dark so I've only had a suggestion for a whip it any more palace cat maybe though they are very fierce This one, uh, it is in your um, description, the patron. And um, this is a photo. This is an unsplash, ugh, unsplash image. Um, so the photographer's info is on the description. It's actually your saved ref. When you save the reference photo, 
um, I save it with the photographer's name so you've got it to hand. Yeah, fan art doesn't work like that. Go for your mono. We're just going to put a little bit of light just there. An elephant. An elephant. <laughs> when you finish the eagle, let me know if you want to do an elephant. <laughs> um, I think at the moment an elephant would be too hard. The problem I have with uh, elephants and rhinos and things like that is um, skin. So when you come to do Tombe the chimp, um, there's when we come to do his face, the uh, like the lines and stuff are very unique to you. So when we come to do an elephant, that's the same issue we'd have. So a lot of the session would be you drawing on your own. And I think that might be too much for a lot of people. I have to consider like, um, yeah, I have to consider like, obviously you guys are gonna improve constantly throughout your journey with me, but I'll always have brand new beginners. And I think if they all got stuck into that, to an elephant, Oh, it'll blow their mind like I think the eagle was probably a bit too much um look at this eye it looks so good they're doing so well palace cat would be nice I do have a really beautiful reference photo of a palace cat from Nina so yeah it's potential um I could do like a small section of an elephant as like a like a a study on it so you know like a small section like this um I'll have a look, but I just, I think it might be too much. A pig. I like a pig. I used to work with two pigs called Welly and Miranda. Right, go for your two. Are you all caught up, by the way? Are you all up to the same point as me? Because I can just linger for a minute if anybody just wants to finish off before we move to the out of the eye. Outer eye. Just let me know where you're up to. <coughs> yeah, it looks good. I'm really quite pleased with it. Yeah, Welly and Miranda are ace. We used to take them for walks around the zoo. And it got to a point where where Miranda just, she'd be walking around, it'd be a busy like Saturday afternoon, and she'd just wander in. And out of nowhere, she would just absolutely explode with excitement and just belt it back to her enclosure. But obviously the speed of, an, of a pig versus me, <laughs> it was so impossible to keep up. She was amazing. Bless her. No, yeah, all good. Okay. Uh, we'll start by going on this outside of the eye first. So this outside bit. And I'm going to pull around the pencil. Coming from the centre of the eye. And then we had this other pig called Rita. Um, she was very, very old pig. Very grumpy. And... Uh, I used to hate taking her for walks in spring because she would uh, beeline for the apple tree. And I know what I would lie. I once got called, I was a senior keeper, so uh, like some of the junior staff would take her out or whatnot. And I once got called by one of the, who's now a senior, she's qualified now. Uh, she's a, who's a, she was qualified then, but she was senior now. Um, I got called by her because Rita went into the apple tree bush and she couldn't get her out and the poor girl stood there for two hours <laughs> um oh where do you live please tell me the largest natural habitat in the zoo world is it is it um are you bush gardens or san diego go for your 2b just on the edge here, we're going to make it um, balance it out a little bit from this middle bit. I got to know your East Coast, North Carolina. Of course, you said North Carolina. I think bucket list for me is to get to Georgia Aquarium. Gosh, I'd love to go see it. Stay with that 2B. 
So what might happen as you're drawing is you're going to lose your reference line here. So you just need to pop it back in. Why have I not heard of this? I'm a terrible former zookeeper. And I'm just balancing that graphite out. And I'm doing these lines because it's going to add the detail for us really easily. Back to the 2H. And I'm going to switch to circling. So I've made this sort of line because obviously this is where the hairs start. Now I'm not actually that bothered by these hairs. They're not going to be the same. But I want to create the eyelid first before we worry about anything else. Oh, I'd love to go to the aquarium in Georgia. It's bucket list, that one. San Diego Sea World's another one. I've made quite a few connections with a couple of keepers there. Again, just going to give this a smooth in, really pushing it in. Going to wait till my daughter's a little bit older so she can remember stuff like this. At the moment, she's a little bit young. I'm going to switch in for that 2B again. And again, just balancing that. Going for the circling for the skin texture. You'll also get a bit of graphite deposit as well, it's going to give us a bit extra um, texture down. Oh yeah, I'd love again. I mean, I'm a typical Brit, so yeah, the the plan would be to go to Florida, and then go up to um, Georgia, and then go up to San Diego. I think I'd probably do both Sea Worlds. I'd probably do um, Florida and San Diego. Go meet some of the keepers, which would be so cool. You can see I'm not worrying about how this looks at the moment. I'm just kind of going for circling and textured look. I'm just balancing in that graphite out on the eyelid. We did come to New York a few years ago, but we didn't have time to fit in. Bronx, not Bronx Zoo, uh, New York City Zoo, or whatever it's called. It's probably called Bronx, actually. Um, we ended up doing other things. Oh, no, it's Central Park Zoo. Kind of wish we had done it. I'm going to give this a smooth in. Ooh, yeah. <sighs> You still live in Florida, Monica. That's amazing. Why are you back in Norway? <laughs> Mind you, I love Norway. I don't mean that. I love Norway. Now, I have just lost a little bit of the detail inside the eye here. So I'm just going to add it back in.
No way, it's cold, man. Still my favourite place on earth. <laughs> love Norway. Too many spiders. <laughs> Fair enough. Going back to the 2B and I'm just going to build up on the eyelid layer here. A small amusing story. I've got one of my bestest friends is from Norway, uh, from Bergen and um, he moved out to Australia some years ago um, to c complete his PhD and obviously being an exchange student and things like that um, they had like these like team building days are you going to put this lesson on your patron? Um, it will be available to patron and also my youtube channel it will always be available um, And yeah, it's minus 27 the other day, that's mental. But in minus 14, that was quite interesting, that was in Sweden. Um, yeah, so he was on this like team building day, um, like to meet people and stuff that were also part of the exchange and they were looking at like ecology stuff. And he was just scouring around and uh, he found this spider and he picks it up. He <laughs> walks over to the um, guide and he's like, look at this cool spider I found. And the guide apparently just froze and was like, put the spider down now. And Dan being Dan was like, oh, why are you so worried? And like, was like, he's so cool and all this lot. And the guide's like, Dan, put the spider down. So he goes and puts it down. Turns out he picked, out, picked up one of the most dangerous spiders in the whole world. <laughs> I think it's the burrowing spider in Australia. <laughs> and he just had it casually walking around his hand. It's always made me giggle that one. Okay, I'm quite happy with the top eyelids. We're going to go for the one underneath for now. And then we'll come back and we'll start doing some hair. Yeah, when we were in Norway, um, Monaco a few years ago, the um, the first time, four years ago I think it was, um, we went to Sweden first, it was minus 14, and we were promised minus 27 plus, like, temperatures, because, like, Ull is probably, he said one of the places that they send people to train for Svalbard, I can't say, this, I think it's Svalbard, probably saying it wrong, you know what I mean. And uh, we got there and it went to plus seven all week and all the snow started melting and it's the first time in history over New Year that I'd ever done that. <laughs> this is why us Norwegians need to stay home. <laughs> That's exactly what Dan says. <laughs> it's so true. He's so dangerous. Just picking up like the world's most dangerous spider. <laughs> I used to, so being a zookeeper, um, I used to do a lot of treks with the lions. Here's another amusing story for you. When I was pregnant, um, I was in the area and I'd been asked to go check these locks and check to see where the cats were. There was three at the time. So it was Bailey, big African male lion, um, Malika and Naja. And I went inside the public zone and I could see all three of them were on the bed. So, because I knew they were there, I went round the back to check the locks and basically the lock protocol is um, if you're a qualified keeper you need a senior keeper up to check your locks so um, I went around the back and obviously started checking the locks to make sure one that they were locked and two that she could go outside and that all the slides were shut and that they weren't able to lift the slide and the slide hadn't malfunctioned things like that it's quite a responsibility and I was possibly, I must have been about 28 weeks pregnant. Um, and when I checked the cats, they were all fast asleep in bed. So I went around the back, started checking the locks. And I put <laughs> the like area, so say this is like the area of the back of the, so say this is like the gate. And then this is like the corridor. And like you're literally right, right in the center. So like you didn't have a lot of room. It was only a tiny, tiny area. 
and I'd gone around, I'd gone into that little zone and I was holding onto this slide that I have to pull my weight down so it'd lift the slide and obviously check it wasn't. And as I did that, Bailey, big African male lion, flew out of bed and he flew at the gate. And I tell you, I nearly gave birth because <laughs> he literally scared the bejesus out of me. And I'm so pleased the zoo wasn't open there was a few swear words <laughs> i couldn't breathe i had a stitch like he and it, he was fast asleep i do not know how he knew it was me oh it was it was a horrible <laughs> feeling and the thing is when you're around the front on the public zone like you wouldn't um like if he came up to the window like you could see how big he was but you'd never get that intensity but round the back when you're actually at the gates, my word, there was something else, I tell you. Something else. Right, 2B. Oh, I could tell you all kinds of amusing stories from the zoo. I have many, many, many stories, but that's probably one of my favourites when I was pregnant. Oh, it was, it was a horrible feeling. He he was so like, he spat at me and everything. <laughs> he, it was, he wanted me. He wanted me. Me and my child. That's what he wanted. So funny. If you've just joined, I'm talking about an African male lion. I'm, I'm not talking about anything else. <laughs> so we've got a bit of a dark zone here. I will come back to like, focusing on what we're doing. Um, so we've got like a line coming off the corner of the pupil there. It's probably not as extenuated as that. Um, but it doesn't really matter. And then we've got kind of like a line going up. And then to create this natural lift of this eyelid and to make it look natural, the dark line is going to be underneath, but it's not a thick black line. One thing I like to say to people is when you're drawing, draw what you see, not what your brain tells you to, to draw. Your brain will naturally want to create just a thick line here, but that's just not going to cut it. So go for your circling action. We've got a bit of depth on the corner here you know, the animals definitely behave differently when I was pregnant at the zoo very different they, they all knew I was slow <laughs> and they knew it It's not uncommon, yeah. Silverbacks. I tell you something. Great apes scare me. I am petrified of great apes. Um. So. Yeah, anything to do with great apes just makes me feel quite queasy. You never want a great ape out of its enclosure when you're at a zoo. Never ever. ever. No, thank you. I would rather face the three lions than any great ape out of its enclosure and even then those lions are having me <laughs> but at least like they would no no I just I can't I just can't deal with great apes they just frighten me if a great ape gets out of its enclosure the safest place that you can be is either at home because you didn't go to the zoo that day and you're fine or in their enclosure because generally they should actually keep the enclosure should keep them in so there's nowhere else in the zoo that you're safe there's just there's just nowhere it doesn't happen though really it's so so rare that anything like that happens anyway the protocols in place now across like accredited zoos across the world it's it's amazing but yeah <laughs> no thank you yeah great apes scare me they just scare me don't like them avoid at all costs and it's always an animal at the zoo when they were doing escape drills that they'd always pick the blinking chimps I didn't have the most amazing track record 
of surviving drills. Honestly, not my fault. To <laughs> to the point where I actually knew a drill was going to happen, and I knew the animal, and I knew it was right by my section. And basically, a drill escape is generally a member of staff running around crazy, sometimes with silly string. Um, sometimes with a t-shirt on that says what animal it is and it's absolutely hilarious but it's treated very very seriously um, and yeah so I knew that it was going to be the hyena and they're right by my section I knew the time it was going to happen I knew the type of drill it was I knew who was involved I knew everything I knew all the details I shouldn't have known but I knew anyway um, the drill was late the call goes out on the radio and I casually just grab my member of staff and I'll be like let's go we know where to go New knowing knowing exactly what animal where it's coming from and all this lot anyway it turns out that the member of staff that called the drill actually called the drill like two minutes after <laughs> the animal technically escaped so I died I literally came out of the enclosure and ran straight into it and I was, I was just like, what? I sacrificed myself for the member of staff I was with. <laughs> so yeah, basically, um, more of a story of this one is don't go to the zoo with me. Um, because if anything happens, they're coming for me. Look at that, we've really created this beautiful line and I've left a small gap just at the top. Just by doing the circling all the way along. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Oh gosh, that's a bit harsh. Now on your screen, um, the photo or the Drawing may look a little bit harsh in places. Um, I will tell you that it is uh, very, very soft. I've just got my sharpness up so you guys can see the pencil marks quite nicely. I can't believe it's been an hour and a half already. I hope you guys are enjoying this and hope it's been fun so far. And we're gonna do a bit of fur now. Bristol Zoo yeah wild place project so they did their Christmas card drive this year and they used my designs actually fun fun fact it was fun to I'm just gonna have a quick drink it was really sad that Bristol Zoo closed really really sad but it's good that they can continue the work and they're still basically Bristol Zoo does anybody have any questions about the process that we've just taken there because I am really happy with that it looks amazing oh yeah that's so cool uh, polar bears are incredible so I'm going to start with the 2H what I'm going to do I'm going to mm, it's tricky because we could use our craft tool here, but I didn't actually put it in the um, the list. So I don't think it's fair to bring that in in case people currently don't have it that are drawing right now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll create the base layer of 2H and we're gonna start doing the hair. So we're gonna start doing lines rather than circles because it's gonna help us Oh great, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm really pleased that you're enjoying it. Especially you're able to type and draw at the same time. So we're gonna curve our lines round so the, ha the hair's gonna come up, it's gonna come up here, it's gonna continue to come up and then just about here, it's gonna change and it's gonna come down towards the eye and then the hair underneath is gonna curve round like the this part underneath is so easy and this is this part that can be that little bit tricky at times 
I will hopefully, for those that are on Patreon, I will hopefully, um, we'll do like an evening one Friday where it's just us um, and I'll open up a Zoom and you guys can join in if you want to and come and have a chat. Quality will be tricky to um, maintain, like video quality, because I'd have to use my phone. Unfortunately, Zoom are just it's just an awful platform, but it can still be fun. A spider monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a primate girl. Honestly, I'm really not. Spider monkeys are alright. Uh, not my favourite. I think if I'm going to do a... Oh, it's not even a primate. You can't really... Cl they're not classed as primates, but lemurs are pretty cool. Okay. So, let's go for the mono. I'm going to go for a nice sharp... So I'm just cleaning it up here. Just get rid of some of the graphite on it. So you want nice sharp edges to your mono. I haven't got sharp edges yet. A carpy? Hmm, could do a carpy. Hmm, I do have a nice a carpy. So now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna create tiny links. Hmm, have I not done a links? Oh, I did a links for um, my Christmas card. That's what I'm thinking of. I could do a links. So I'm just going to create little hairs here. And then we're going to colour, if you like, a lot around them. Yeah, rangs are alright. <laughs> I say it. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm just not a primate fan. It's more I'm scared of them. They're too real. Though I do have the most gorgeous uh, commission drawing of a keeper holding an orangutan's hand. And it's truly probably the most delicate piece that I've ever done. Apart from Gracie. Just created some little hairs going around there. And now with my 2B... So this is where I think we could have used the craft tool. I'm just going to kind of try and go around them. This is going to be really tricky actually. So I might actually just not do that and just go for... No, I've switched up. It's not working for me. I can never really do that. I have to do it a different way. So I'm going to base layer with 2B. Still kind of following this like hair. pattern yeah we can look at a lynx palace cat you guys like your big, big cats and primates I could look at um, a whippet type for maybe patron lesson Mountain lion, yeah, mountain lion's cool. Do like a mountain lion. I'm currently loving drawing our fox. He's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna bring in nice clean mono. I'm just going to bring in some hairs. Doesn't need much, just needs a couple of hairs coming in. Got a bit of um section going on there. Looks good. Go for your 2H and we'll just carry on building these hairs. 
again just overlapping your hairs constantly leopard jaguar or even a snow leopard I do have a leopard in my folder mm, currently doing hyena in colour um, it's a special request that one uh, might do a leopard for the classes perhaps um, we have just done a cheetah so I was kind of coming away from big cats for a little while now I'm pulling these this pencil round and really curving it over here couple of suggestions I can certainly have a little nosy and see what my photographers have got I like to kind of switch between them and uh, give my photographers exposure here and there I've done a lot of Nina's photos recently I think I need to bring in some more Jamie's. Oh, the Orca, yeah, it's on my wall actually. I can see it from where I'm sitting. It's in our bedroom. Um, dolphin, yeah, I could do. The difficulty with like sea creatures is capturing the water and stuff um, we did the hippo um, which was really fun the orcas was brilliant I love drawing that and um, they got shortlisted for wildlife arts of the year last year you give it a nice smooth in following that direction when you're smooth don't forget to follow follow it very important I actually have the most amazing orca drawing coming up this year um, but it's going to take me a whole year to draw, I think. I'm incredibly lucky to have found an amazing photographer who has kindly given me one of his pictures to use. That would be my child coffin. That's not ideal. just leave a gap between dark light and, and then we've got another dark zone here we're not going to go right up but we just want to create and then we've got another dark patch here And we'll switch into the mono in a minute. Go for your mono. Really long strokes with your mono razor there. Really, if you need to. Just clean up. Really should sell that orca piece. I've plans to go through all my original works and just get some sold. I've got tons of stuff just sitting around. Look at that. Looks fantastic. Okay, let's do a little bit over here. I've only got 20 minutes or so to go. So I don't want to do too much. I've got my 2H in my hand. 
and this is where the hair is just going to fan round and then hit downwards it's going to curve right over there a sea turtle yeah I might consider it I haven't actually done a reptile Let's see what where I can fit it in this year I've got some big big projects this year um, hopefully I might have time to fit something in if not it can be in the idea folder Follow that round with your blending stump. And then go for your 2B. We've got some really like deep lines here and you can put them in quite nicely in between your gaps and don't be fearful of doing it either have any of your students ever gone and got commissions yes they have uh, Nikki is one I haven't seen her around for a while I'll drop her a message actually she's still part of Patreon I don't know if she's here today uh, she does really well from what I believe or she's done a couple or I might be completely wrong and making that up um, but I really hope some of you do I really hope some of you are able to make some money out of this because why not one of my first ever students um, she does commissions now we used to do private sessions together on um Go for your mono, I'm just going to bring in that detail. Short, choppy hairs. Yeah, she's, her level of work completely changed and yeah, she stopped having her lessons with me and started taking commissions. I was really quite proud of her. And she was quite young actually. She was still in school, GCSE age. Let me see if she still does it. Let me just quickly check. Ella. Where is she? Oh, I'm going to have to have a really good look for her under my... Um, friend list. Yeah, I was really proud of her. Back to my 2B. Your first commission is always like the most scary one and then they get easier as you uh, continue on. I'm going to go back to the 2H and I'm just going to, so the hair just in this corner is going to curve over. really curving over and one thing I'll say is when you start doing commissions is make sure that you're ready for it don't just rush into it and don't take on work just because you're being paid make sure that it's way within your level and capacity because when you take on work just because someone's offering you money and you it's the worst reference photo you've ever seen in your life it is the most demoralizing thing you'll ever go through i've done it 
I do it quite a lot, even today. I have somebody on my commission list, I know I can't draw it and I need to speak to them, but I am going to refund them. Um, it's just demoralising, so don't do it to yourself. Make sure you're happy with your own level and knowledge. As we come over this area, the hair's actually just going to come over to the edge there. It's kind of like, it's a quick change. Just about here, just curves over just a little bit. It's not much. Getting a bit of arm ache here because I can't anchor my elbow very well. I'm going to give that a smooth in. Make sure you follow it with your blending stump as well. Switch to your 2B. just at the edge here is just going to match the depth oh so give my arm a bit of a stretch there but we are coming to the end can you believe it we'll just finish off this bottom bit and yeah there isn't a lot more to it I don't feel like you need to give it too much more like I remember when you're drawing small, this area just wouldn't take that much time. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's nice to do something different this evening. Otherwise, I would have just sat on my board and carried on looking at the same horse I've looked at all day. Okay, gonna go back over here and I'm just gonna bring in some depth and then we can use that mono. coming at the right time because my daughter is currently awake but she's not calling out at the minute Gonna give that a smooth. I'm not gonna get rid of the lines, I'm just gonna give it a bit of detail. And then let's go for the mono. She's too little, she's only three. Her idea of drawing is uh, grab a pencil and. <laughs> yeah, and she started crying, bless her. Mm. 
I apologize if she screams. Sometimes she kicks off if daddy goes in. Just gonna clean up this edge. Not happy with this bit here. Have you guys enjoyed it? Have you learnt something this evening? Hopefully you've taken something away from today. I think it's nice to draw together. Just going to switch back into the 2H just to tidy this up a little bit more. I'm gonna go for the 4B and I'm just gonna balance the darker bits. Oh, I've just had my first photo sent to me. If you've been drawing, please post your photos. I would love to see it. Let's see what Ali's drawn. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. That is absolutely amazing. Well done. Yeah, I'd love to see your drawings, so just message me. Let me see what you've produced. You've got any suggestions to for me to improve for you guys? Do I need to slow down? Do I need to speed up? Do I need to explain more? Do I need to stop waffling? Actually, don't say the latter because that will never change. Yeah, don't worry, Monica, it's fine. Just glad you could make it. Yeah, the time just flew by. No, you're so welcome, Ali. You're most, most welcome. Yeah, get your pictures posted on the group. Or drop me a message. Let me see what you've been up to, how, what you've created. Don't forget, um, if you share this on social media, just drop me a tag and drop the artist who... the photographer as well. That's important. But yeah, there that. We are all done. What I'll do before we all go, just so you can see, I'm just going to configure the video so you can see how soft this actually is. So if I just drop the sharpness down, there you go. So you can see how soft my drawing is. It's not as sharp. It's really, really, really soft. Has anybody got any questions? You want to ask? I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I think it was good fun tonight. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah, time to just fly. Literally, I can't believe that's over. But it just goes to show like how much we can actually get done in two hours. <laughs> They're quite a lot and it does look so beautiful and if you wanted to create more detail in the eye you can but I just wanted to show you that you don't need to worry too much about that you can just go for the, the out you know the main focus details and leave the rest well if no one's got any questions I'm gonna leave it there um obviously this is gonna be um uploaded to YouTube and so I'll link it through to Patreon so if anybody wants to see it, it'll be there and it'll also be on my website probably in the next couple of days. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me tonight and uh, I'm glad I didn't do this completely on my own. <laughs> and I hope to see you guys again very soon. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening and have a great week. See you later. <laughs>